Hey guys, it's John. You are on the JRB Tree Climbing channel. JRBTreeClimbing.com is my website. And I also have a Patreon, JRB Tree Climbing. I recently reached out to my team on Patreon asking them their choice for upcoming videos. And this was their choice. A video on my rules for safe climbing. And these rules apply to any climbing system, not just rope climbing systems. I've been doing this a long time, and I started out like the rest of you. I started out with ladders and sticks and stands and any way I could get into a tree. That seemed easy and it seemed safe. But over the years, I learned a lot, and I learned a lot of it from the arborist industry and the rescue, rope rescue industry and specialty. Uh, and I came up with a lot of ideas and I've been slowly as assembling this list and I'm looking forward to giving them to you. Um, the, the first point I want to make before you give my, my rules is that this, this game, this climbing game, especially in a saddle, it's got some dynamics we're not used to. And the first one you're probably already used to, but that's just this to feel comfortable on a swinging rope. The first time that we do this, it, it doesn't feel real comfortable not having something under our backside. But there's, there's other components to this game that we don't always appreciate. And one of them is just the, the numbers part of it, meaning that every other game, you know, one in a thousand or one in 10,000, these numbers seem astronomical. But in climbing, those kind of numbers aren't very good. We're, one in a million isn't good enough for me. We want to make sure that the chances of an accident are effectively nil. And so just keep that in mind. It's not about what you can do. It's what you can do reliably and repeatably in adverse conditions and in the presence of other failures. You want to feel invincible. My first rule for a safe climbing system is to tie in. I want you tied into the tree the entire time. From the moment your feet leave the ground until you get down, I want you tied into the tree. I do not consider a lineman's belt an adequate tie-in to the tree because it's not cinched into the tree. We want a cinching tie-in. A lineman's belt, you can think of that more as a positioning device. Case in point, if you lose your footing, which you should assume you will at some point, whether it's human error or a failure of whatever they are on, a lineman's belt will not consistently prevent a fall or an injury. My number two rule for a safe climbing system is to buy in. We want to buy trusted, rated components from reputable suppliers and manufacturers. Often you'll see something listed online that says it's UIAA rated. Well, you don't have to trust that. You can look that up. There's a website to, to do so. You want to make sure that your supplier is also reputable because there is always the possibility that you think you are getting a product which is safe and you're actually not. Don't skimp when it comes to your life and the components which sustain it. My third rule is to do your homework. It's research. Make sure that you're, you know, Google is your friend. I see a lot of folks asking questions online, but they're not always asking them the right way. Folks will ask a question like, hey, is anybody else cutting out their line, their uh, leg straps on their saddle? And sure enough, others will chime in that they are. That's probably not the best way to ask the question. Probably want to ask, what are the drawbacks to doing so? Do your homework. The arborists have a saying, which is that um, dead men tell no tales. And you know, think about that. Yeah, the folks who are doing, you know, questionable practices as as one of those or two of those or gosh forbid more of those get hurt. Well, those folks aren't around anymore. They're not crawling the saddle hunter pages and giving advice anymore. They're they're tending to more important priorities after their injuries. So keep that in mind. The stakes are high. My fourth rule is a four-letter word. It's the tree. We want to choose our tree wisely. 
just because a tree is in the right spot, it doesn't make it a safe tree to climb. Inspect the trunk, make sure it's alive and healthy. If you're a rope climber like I am and you're throwing over a, a tree crotch, make sure that branch is alive and adequate for holding your life. A, a decent rule of thumb is that it's got to be at least as thick as your wrist ideally thicker and that that can vary there are weaker and stronger trees out there and you should know what you're climbing on my fifth rule is a five letter word slack we have to manage slack so i said in rule one you, that you tie in but just because you're tied into the tree doesn't mean that you haven't allowed slack to creep in i like to measure slack in no more than a hand span I measure it in inches, not feet, no matter how I climb, and it's ideally zero inches. As soon as we let slack creep into our system, we offer the potential, quite literally, for a fall. And when our, our system has to arrest a fall, we have a lot more energy than our body weight. We learned that in, in high school physics. I'm not going to start a math uh, lesson now, but gravity is always watching us and it will accelerate us as we as we fall and even a short fall can generate some incredible forces my sixth rule is a six letter word strong we want to make sure that all the components in our system are adequately strong how strong an old rule of thumb was that a life safety system, that all components in that system should be at least 10 times stronger than the working load. These days we generally go by 15 or 20 times. My, my personal number is 15. I want to make sure every part of my system is at least 15 times the working load. So when, you, when you're looking at uh, items and you see the MBS, the minimum braking strength, well, there's the strength. What's the load you're putting on it? On this system, this is a doubled rope system, so half of my weight is on each side of the system. There's four strands on these two friction hitches, so a quarter of my weight is on each of those strands. But if I took the same system and I did an SRT climb, the numbers are different. Do your homework and make sure every component of your system is adequately strong. The seventh rule is a seven letter word and it is inspect. We have to inspect our system ideally after each use or before each use. I realize we climb sometimes in the darkness in the morning so we can't exactly do an inspection right then. But you know, uh, for example, metal components can suffer from fatigue. We could have uh, sticks or platforms that, are, that have a crack and showing that wear prior to an actual failure. Friction hitches need to periodically be untied and retied. I'm asked all the time if I could tie friction hitches for folks or sell them systems with friction hitches already tied, and my answer is always no. You tie your own hitches so that you can periodically untie them and inspect them. Uh, the eighth rule is to practice. It's an eight-letter word. Folks all the time will be a week before hunting season and starting to climb for the first time. And especially for uh, advanced techniques like rope climbing, you need some time to master the technique. And we've got all season, all year to do it. It's, it's quite fun, especially with the confidence that I have in my rope system. The ninth rule is to manage stability, a nine letter word. What do I mean? There are a lot of questionable implements and techniques and devices being used by climbers that are inadequately stable. So for example, your tie into the tree it should not be able to be easily destabilized. If you stand up on your platform and take load off of your tether and your tether starts to fall down the tree, it's inadequately stable. There are many options and I've, I've publicized a list of them myself. Clean that up. I see folks climbing with climbing sticks where they are putting a rope through a device which could be easily flipped out with just just a finger. That's inadequately stable. We can we can assuming that device is at least 10 or 15 times the working load and can be used for that application, then all we need to do is stabilize that connection. Make sure nothing can be easily destabilized. 
And the tenth and final rule is ten letters, two words. You've heard it a million times, but boy, does it apply here. And it's Murphy's Law. Murphy lives in the canopy. You know Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And you should evaluate your system, which might be different than mine, for what that set of failures could be. But for example, if you can drop something that you need, you're going to drop it. What are you going to do after you drop it? If you can slip off of something, you're, you're going to slip. It's going to happen eventually. If it could kick off of the tree, it's going to happen. Got to make sure we think about all of the failure modes that are possible. For example, you dropped your flashlight. Well, are you completely comfortable repelling or getting down out of the tree with no light? You could have stayed in the tree too long on a really cold evening and your, your hands are half frostbitten and you can't, you can't adequately, uh, you, can't, you don't want to take your gloves off and you don't have the finger strength. Got to think about everything that can go wrong. Um, and I, I realize I'm wearing my helmet today. I realize that hunters aren't exactly going to run out and, and buy helmets. I don't know any hunters who climb trees with a helmet. Uh, and other industries know that, uh, for example, in the arborist industry and in rock climbing, recreational climbing, everybody wears helmets and they think we're all pretty crazy for not doing so. So what's my point? If My point is without that personal protective equipment, that would keep us hopefully conscious after we fell to at least call for help, we, we have absolutely no tolerance for anything that could go wrong as per the other nine rules and the components and changes to our system because of them. Uh, another example of something that could go wrong is uh, you didn't tell anyone where you are hunting or climbing and therefore no one knew where to look for you share your location information think about everything that could go wrong and have a plan for it in conclusion you just don't want to take chances you it's not about what you can do it's what you can do reliably and repeatably think as if you were climbing the tree and you weighed a ton imagine that you weighed 10 times more than you do and you were climbing on all the same gear would it hold you the answer's got to be yes if not go back to the drawing board and make some changes all right guys thank you very much